What's up guys, welcome back to Melican Fishing. It's about negative 76 degrees outside. Apparently we've got a little cold front in the Midwest. So we're doing a little old school tip type video in the basement, indoors, unfortunately, and we're not out on the water. But that's okay because today I'm gonna tell you what I feel are the best baits for you to be throwing right now in this late pre-spawn phase when the fish are absolutely chewing. You know, the bite's been super hit and miss here lately. Uh, a lot of that's due to the weather going up and down. We finally got some consistency, it was warm, and those fish started to really pull up and eat well. And then it was kind of just a timing deal in the day. You know, it seems later in the day in the afternoons when that water heats up a couple degrees has been freaking awesome. It's been really, really great that time of day. Problem is, that's not always when we can get out and do the fishing. So we've struggled a little bit in a couple videos lately. We've whacked them in a couple videos lately, especially in that night tournament video we won. I'll link that down below if you want to check out how we just won a tournament in this exact situation and how we approach some of the different cover in front of us. But, you know, about a month ago, I did a throw this now segment of baits I feel that work the best right now in a couple different scenarios. So that's what I'm gonna do tonight. I'm gonna tell you two different scenarios and how I like to approach those based on what could be in front of you right now in the late pre-spawn phase and what's happening with our water here in Nebraska and a lot of the Midwest and will be happening further up north as we get going. So situation number one we've been faced with here in the pre-spawn, the late pre-spawn that is, is a shallow, muddy lake. We had a lot of man-made lakes around here with a lot of shallow cover, a lot of it's riprap, shallow docks, shallow grass, stuff like that. And my favorite bait to throw in these situations right now is a square bill crankbait. You know, you can cover a ton of water with this, and when they're moving on that riprap in the pre-spawn, I always try to position my boat parallel with the riprap, make longer casts, keep that bait right in the strike zone. You know, when it's shallow riprap, they're not gonna be way out off the bank. They're gonna be right there on that, so you wanna be bringing this square bill and deflecting on those rocks. Uh, as you saw in the video uh, for my tournament that we just won as well, Throwing this guy around any type of wood and docks is an awesome, awesome ticket right there. This is the Six Cents Crush 50 Square Bill. It's what we won the tournament on the other night. Uh, so obviously it's a bait I have a ton of confidence in. I've caught several fish over four pounds on it here the last few days. Check it out if you want to catch a bunch of fish around riprap and other shallow cover. Bait number two that I like to throw in the situation is the old chatterbait. Now I'll throw this one anytime we get around more sparse grass. Uh, grass and flats, this one seems to really shine. Obviously throwing a crankbait in the grass uh, is extremely difficult, but late in the pre-spawn after they get off that trap bite, throwing this chatterbait is absolutely killer. I don't do a whole lot of different things with colors. You know, in shad lakes, I like to throw a white. In bluegill lakes where that's the main forage, I like to throw a green pumpkin blue. This one is what I made in the video. Uh, the how to make your own chatterbait video, so I'll link that down below as well. Check that out if you want to make one just like that. It's beautiful. Been catching a lot of fish on this guy lately as well. Again, off-color situations. Love this chatterbait. All right, so the third type of bait I like to throw in this situation, shallow, muddy water. This one comes into play when it's overcast or you got a little bit of wind, low light conditions, morning, night, the old buzz bait. They really love to get around shallow cover in the pre-spawn, especially when there's low light conditions. And when there's low light conditions, I don't think you can beat a top water. You know, a lot of people don't like to throw a top water like a buzz bait uh, in the pre-spawn phase when it's in the waters in the 50s and 60s. And that can be one of the deadliest times you can catch fish and big ones on this bait. You don't catch too many small ones is when there's super low light conditions and they're around that shallow cover, whether it be riprap, grass, wood, brush piles, anything. If you can pull this over the top of grass in the pre-spawn on lead banks back to the spawning areas, or same deal around the shallow riprap on the way back to the spawning areas, absolutely a killer way to catch some of your biggest fish and pick off those isolated fish and cover a ton of water is with this buzz bait. All right, so the second scenario we're gonna talk about is what we were faced with at the first lake uh, the video I shot with Flair this last weekend, and that is ultra clear water in the pre-spawn. And when it's super, super clear, and you don't have those low light conditions like we had when we got that frog bite in the morning or on the shallow grass, it can be extremely difficult to pattern and catch fish. When there's high light conditions, the fish can see a super long ways. That makes it extremely difficult to catch them on your traditional chatter bait, even on a swim jig. I mean, the water was 10 feet visibility. Those fish weren't even having a swim jig. So here's what I like to do in those situations, and I know it's this way, 
Uh, a lot of the, the Highland Reservoirs too, like Table Rock, Ozarks, uh, Hartwell, all sorts of lakes around the country. Here's how I approach the lakes around here when that water is super clean, the pre-spawn. Bait number one is Ole Mr. Confidence, the football jig. You know, with the water being clean, I always like to throw a natural color. And when the water's clean, I always cut that down to a finesse skirt, cut my trailer way down so you have a nice, short, compact profile. This will work especially well if it's ultra clear water and there's a little bit of wind. The more wind, the less light penetration, and the more realistic this looks and the more it looks like a crawdad. You can get a ton of bites on that. And something uh, as a backup after you've milked through an area a little bit with this, is a swing head. You know, Flair caught a couple big ones on a swing head uh, with a little biffle bug on it, a natural watermelon red, any type of green pumpkin or watermelon color. And we were catching them on a point that came out underwater, had grass that came out. Off the end of that, there was some rock, brush, perfect staging area because that led back to a spawning pocket. You know, it was a smaller man-made lake, so there wasn't a ton of areas like that on the lake. So unfortunately, we couldn't just go run that and run a pattern. If we could, I guarantee we would have caught a bunch of fish. Um, but it was a perfect area for those fish to set up and feed on bluegill, crappie, any other type of bait fish that could be moving by there. You know, there was times, though, when they were just nipping at this, and I could tell they were just picking it up and spitting it right back out. Probably didn't look super realistic to them, especially when that wind wasn't blowing. So, in that situation... I picked up the old shaky head. The shaky head, especially with this natural color worm, is a deadly, deadly bait this time of year. I know everyone knows that, everyone throws a shaky head, but what I like to do is I throw a nice beefy worm on there. You know, a lot of guys like to throw that Zoom Magnum Trick Worm, uh, Magnum Finesse Worm. A lot of other different companies have a big Magnum Worm on there that's like a, a six to eight inch bulky style worm bait and that will appeal to bigger fish in the pre-spawn. It does catch the small ones as well, unfortunately, but I, I tend to find you get a little bit better quality bite when you use a magnum worm. I think this is the magnum finicky worm from Bass Pro Shops. Not positive on that, but I'm pretty sure. But I caught some good fish on this as well. It's an awesome bait when it's clear water and you're fishing offshore structure or even riprap or something like that. Anytime there's a lot of light penetration and you need to get some bites, especially around rocky habitat or areas where there's good offshore cover, check out this shaky head. You can catch a lot of fish on that. All right, so that's all I got for now for the throw this now. So again, just to cycle back through those, shallow muddy water, shallow cover. I like a square belt crankbait, a chatterbait around the grass, and a buzz bait if there's low light conditions. And if it's super clean water and their fish are off the bank, you can't beat a trimmed down natural colored football jig. And if that's too much for them, a shaky head with a big bulky worm on it and that can load your boat. Go ahead and comment down below. Let me know what your favorite bait pre-spawn bait that is to throw right now. Hopefully these tips I shared can help you catch more fish in the next couple weeks. You know, a lot of people think since it's been really warm outside, those bass are gonna start spawning sooner. That's definitely not the case. At least what I've found is they'll spawn within a week or two every single year in the same locations even. It's all about that light penetration, the sun angle, this fish can feel it coming. But in two or three weeks here, I guarantee around here anyway, they're going to be locked on the beds and that's an exciting time of the year as well even though they can get super picky. But as always, go ahead and go down there, hit that MF to subscribe to Melican Fishing. Really appreciate you watching this and we'll be checking in soon. Going up to fish a beautiful stretch of the Missouri River for smallmouth and largemouth. So check that out after this upcoming weekend and hopefully you can learn a few things about river, smallmouth, and largemouth fishing. But as always, thanks for watching. I'm out of here. Peace.